Hi, this is Carlos with Integrated Manufacturing, and today I'm going to show you how to repair a Bosch tool. Um, we have a 3290, um, and the problem with this tool is that it is not stopping once it hits torque. Uh, it ratchets, um, and that usually is a problem with the switching element or the micro switch. And it's a pretty simple fix. Um, the first thing you need to do is uh, open the tool. So what I'm gonna use here is I'm gonna use a razor blade. You need very simple items. Uh, I'm gonna use a screwdriver. And I'm gonna use one of these picks. Uh, the first thing I wanna do is take the collar off. It's kinda tricky. Actually, the first thing I wanna do is take the plastic off. Uh, there's a small plastic in between. And you kinda just wanna snip it off. It's kinda tricky, this is the most tricky part, but once you get the hang of it, it's pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Oh, there we go. Yeah, take that off. And now what you wanna do with the razor blade is look in between these two spaces and kind of just slide the razor blade in there. Be careful not to cut yourself. It's probably on an orthodox way to do it, but the way we get to kind of do it here. There you go, just kind of snaps off. And now you want to take the metal ring off the collar is what I call it. This is also kind of tricky. The way I do it is I pull it off a little bit, just enough so I can get some space in between the first part. And I just take that part off. And then I kind of let go. Take the next one off, there you go. That's it. Now you can ring, now the ring is gonna be able to come off. You don't really need to take it off, but if that's easier for you, you can take it off. I usually just leave it right there. Um, and now we gotta take all these screws off. Um, and for that, I'm gonna use this screwdriver over here. Uh, make sure you don't forget these over here. These over here, they're kinda hidden. But uh, I'm gonna take these off and then I'll come back. So now that we have all of our screws off, I'm gonna put them to the side, make sure we don't lose them. And we can take the housing assembly off. And now we have the whole view of the inside of the tool. Now the two main components that cause this problem were the tool uh, does not stop once it hits torque and it just keeps ratcheting making this ugly noise is either the Switching element it's broken or the micro switch is broken one of these two main components uh, Now I'm gonna use my pick just to take this switching element off and make sure that the spring doesn't fly out I'm just gonna take it off just like that And the switching element seems fine. It's incomplete. Usually this small part over here breaks um, and there's no signal basically going to the micro switch, but this switching element looks fine. Usually you can tell by this piece being completely off this small flap over here, but this one seems fine. So I don't think that's the problem. I'm going to go ahead and examine the micro switch. I can already see it, uh, but usually if you can just look at the wiring, this piece is completely off. So this micro switch is, is, is broken. Um, you can just tell because there's usually two wires connected to the micro switch, but this one is just completely off. So we're gonna have to replace that whole part. Um, and this is an easy switch as well. Um, it's a little more complicated than the actual switching element, which is a small plastic piece, but it's still pretty simple. Um, the first thing you wanna do is take the, ha the, the head off. Let's see, got a trick over here. I'm gonna push it in. It's just gonna come right off. There it is. Then we have a little head. There should be a screw in there. A small screw, make sure you don't lose that either. This one usually goes over here. Oh, there we go. And now you wanna lift this off. This is usually the best way to do it. There's other ways you can do it. Um, but I like doing this way, that way I ensure that 
I don't press anything too hard or break anything. Um, and you get a better angle when you want to take the micro switch off because it's connected to the, to the gearbox. Um, so you want to make sure that you don't break the teeth that's connecting to the, uh, to the micro switch. What I do is I give a little pressure over here, kind of pull it, and I'll show you the teeth right after I pull it off. Oh, there you go. That was a little too hard, but you want to make sure that you don't break these teeth because you're not, you have to replace the whole gearbox. Um, so now that I took the micro switch off, I disconnect it. Again, make sure you don't pull it too hard. I don't think you can see this. There you go. It's just connected to this small board over here. Just gonna pull it. There you go. And that's it. This is the part that we're gonna switch. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the part, and then I'm gonna reconnect it to the to the tool. We have our new micro switch. As you can see, there's both wires connected to the micro switch, so this one is in perfect condition. Uh, I mean, it's new. And now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do the opposite of what we just did. Uh, so we're gonna lift off a little bit. I'm gonna actually take this off. Probably make it easier for you. Just take it off, put it to the side. Lift off the gearbox. And then you want to make sure that the button goes uh, facing down, not facing down, but on the lower part. And then we're just sliding in there. There you go. And now the button is on the lower side. And now we just fit everything in there. There's a small space for the board. And you can, you can take it off if that's easier for you too. And then we reconnect, we reconnect the uh, micro switch back to the board. There we go. And now we just slide the board back in. There we go, should fit in there. And there's always spaces for the wires and for every part inside the tool. There's a small gap, I don't know if you can see it there. Small gap right there, that's where the wire goes. So I'm gonna fit everything in there. I'm gonna fit the wires in there. There we go. It should kind of go around, kind of just fit it in there. Make sure that nothing is clamping it so it doesn't break again. Doesn't snap the wire off. Just put it back in there. Perfect. Now we can put the spring back in. There you go. We can put the head back in. Oops. Spring up. Oh. Spring goes up. Now head goes back in there. The other thing I forgot to mention was when you put the head back in, you want to make sure that this open slot is facing up. This is a mistake I did earlier, but you want to make sure that it's facing up because this is where you change the torque target. So now we could push it in a little bit. There you go. Yeah, now it's facing up. And now we're going to slide the switching element back in. Pretty simple. There should be a space as well. It goes right on top of the micro switch. I'll make sure I get a good angle. There's a space in there. You kind of push, well, you push the uh, spring in there. And it's just like right in, so. Oh, there you go. There it is. So you can use their, their tool too, to kind of push it in there. Push this one in more as well, so we don't snap it off. Right. There you go. And one way you can test this, actually I should have put this in there, but one way you can test this is, if you can test the micro switches, you can slide a battery in there. You wanna make sure you're careful with this because the tool might jiggle after it hits torque. But you want to press that red button in there, there's a red button that we're burning the micro switch. You wanna press it, you can use your pick. There you go, Let's see, there you go. And you wanna run the tool, so press. Let's try again. Press. As soon as I let go of the red button, the, the tool should stop. That's a good signal that the micro switch is working. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and try again. Again, red button, press the red button, press the trigger. Yep. Yeah, tool is, tool is working, the micro switch is working. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and slide the switching element in again. So now you have your switching element, your new micro switch, and all the components in there. And now the only part that's left is putting the housing back in and screwing everything in. And this should go in pretty easily. Usually when it's not sliding in easily is because you have, there's a part either misplaced or a little off. There it is. As you can see, yeah, there's no space. And now we go ahead and screw everything back in. Now that you have all your screws in, you can go ahead and put the collar, what I like to call it, back in. Um, this is also kind of a tricky part, but it's okay. The light, the light switch or the light goes in between those small slots in there. It's gonna slide it in there. And now, we put actually this one first. The right side goes first. Kind of just slide them in there. And the light should go in there as well. Should be pretty easy. Let's see if I can get it. And there we go. Oh, maybe not. Let's try to put this in. There it is. Perfect. The light should go in like that. Oops. And now you want to slide we're kind of like press the collar down. There you go. It should snap right on. Um, now the metal ring. This one's also kind of tricky. What I like to do is have the open slot over here on this side. And then open it up. It's kind of tricky with this camera angle, but open it up over here. Try to not scratch the plastic. Push it down, there it is. That's it. And now the plastic just goes right on top. Okay, so I skipped the last part because I was struggling, but now that we got that in there, just slide it down. It should go right on top. Have a red slide, just put it in there. That should be two small pieces. What you do is just twist it to the side, kind of put just one piece in there and then just snaps right in. There you go. Now your tool is ready. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna run it down a calibration unit to make sure that it's stopping when it should stop. And if it does and if it hits torque target, then your tool is all repaired. We have our calibration unit. I put an angle head and a socket and a battery in the tool. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna run the tool down on the calibration unit to make sure that the tool is stopping when it's supposed to stop, giving us a green light um, and it's hitting torque. This is a high torque calibration unit. You always want to make sure that the max torque of the tool does not exceed the max capacity of the calibration unit because you might break the calibration unit. Let's go ahead, make sure you hold it tightly. This is a high torque tool. One more time. Light. Green light. One more time. Green light. Perfect. So our tool is stopping when it's supposed to stop. It's hitting torque. And it's not making any weird jittery sounds. Um, so now we know that the tool is, is working. Um, all of these angle exact ions all of the angle exact iron models can be repaired the same exact way. Uh, it doesn't have to be exactly 3290s. You can repair all of the angle exact iron models the same way. You can also find the parts at Bosch uh, service. I will put the link in the description down below. Um, or you can call us or, or email us or comment down in the video um, and we will be able to help you out. Uh, but yeah, that's how you repair a Bosch tool. Thank you for watching. Have additional questions? Do not hesitate to reach out to us at 800-808-7168.
or you can email us at sales at intmfg.com.